What's going on everybody, it's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video guys, and today I'm going to be ranking all of the promos in Madden 21 Ultimate Team guys. Now before we get into the video, make sure you go down below, hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, and give this video a big thumbs up as always guys. Now, of course, I may not have been present in terms of playing every single promo, but I was there and knew all the content for every promo, right? So, I I've said this throughout many videos, yes, at some point in Madden this year I did get bored of it. I wasn't a fan of uh, playing online on Ultimate Team anymore. I wasn't a fan of keeping up with the, the coin count and the way things are working. I wasn't a fan of the players being dropped. But I was present and recorded and took part in every each and every promo. That's the difference there. So I do know what's going on with the promos. I just wasn't necessarily a fan of actually playing Madden 21 Ultimate Team as much this year as I have been in years past. I'm going to be going all in for Madden 22, of course, guys. But Madden 21 was just a weird vibe. I was excited for next gen, and then it came out. I got the new system, paid all the money for it. Then I played Madden, and Madden sucked the next gen. Then I had to come back to current gen, and the whole vibe was just really killed this year. But promo stayed the same, right? It was good, and they were bad. Let's start off with the all-rookie promo on this list, guys. You see them all here. So in my personal opinion, guys, the all-rookie promo was a fun promo. They had some good stuff. They had some good cards. It was just like any other all-rookie promo. It's not the best promo, but it's not the worst by any means. It's probably above average, which is why I'd probably put the all-rookie in good enough, right? Yes, if there was more top-tier players and more stuff within it, it would be better. But there was a few. There was a Kierce. There was the uh, Edger and James and a few more. They were good cards. I like the all-rookie promo personally. Next, we have the Harvest. The Autumn Blast. Sorry, not Harvest this year. Autumn Blast promo. Autumn Blast promo, just like any other promo, is your typical yearly seasonal promo. In my opinion, Autumn Blast this year was good enough. I mean, I don't think it was the best Autumn Blast slash Harvest we've ever had. Uh, I missed the days of the better Cornucopias, the RG3s, the crazier players. So in my opinion, they could have done better. But it's your typical yearly season. The seasonal promos are always going to be at least good enough, in my opinion. Next, we have the Black History Month promo. I'm going to put that in good enough as well. Now, it's very simple, guys. Black History Month promo was a great idea, a great message, great recognition for Black History Month. The only thing I didn't like is how they how they created the Madden players. They could have made them better. I think it was a disservice to those people that they made to make them as bad as they were. Now, it wasn't that their cards were bad. This was the real issue. It, like, really, it was this. That they said we get a free version of them 95. And by the time that we got the 95 with all the tokens, players were already better and faster. And they, they did disservices to their speed. And they know that Mutt's a speed-dominated game. So pretty much we're always going to the top speed players. And those guys can be powered up, I believe, at some point, And so on and so forth. So they really just made them so they weren't usual Madden players. Like I said, if they had made this promo with players that were meta dominant this car this would have been a top tier promo easy but because of the way they did i mean it was free players which is why free players and black history month that's enough to be good enough but like i said i wish it would have had some better players and not the people themselves i wish they would you know they picked the stats i wish they would have given us more usable stats it's not the players fault that madden created them that way next we have the blitz promo blitz promo as per usual is a great promo i mean again sometimes it's money grab but it's been it's been more fun in recent years and a little bit less of a money grab there's some free stuff to get there's some cold tokens to get there's some players to do it's really not bad at all it's a fun promo campus heroes good enough now i love the fact they give us all these new names and all these new players but for a lot of people that's good enough for me personally as a player who tries to you know i don't do theme teams i'd like to just build the best team um the campus heroes is a culmination of players that probably i won't i won't ever touch now yes tim tebow all these all these names are super cool but they're not usable players tim tebow's slow animation combined with not being aaron Rodgers or mahomes or any of those other guys is always gonna hurt him Durin versus the world forgettable it seemed in my head when i look at Durin versus the world i don't remember the 97 derwin james i don't remember any of those players i remember me checking in every week to leave my phone to waste battery on an empty stream every week to get my free token that would glitch and then not get it and then at the end of it end up just quitting and not getting anything because that was a way for us to get viewership and attention and um again I, it's cool they gave us a free player with it but again it took what months by the time we got the player he by the time we got the player he was good but he was going to quickly be overshadowed by someone else if it was 99 that would have been different but it wasn't nfl draft top tier i mean uh it, it's always a fun promo it's very i like promos that are immersive to real life which is why team of the week for me is always kind of cool it's not the best players but you know it shows like it reflects real life now the nfl draft reflects a real life draft my new player on the giants you know uh, Kadarius tony um if you're a jacks fan trevor lawrence so on and so forth they were the players are actually usually good there's some 99s in there there's some past players always a fun time next guys for this promo right here we got fan appreciation this has to be one of the top ones because of course it's just it's for the fans it's for us it's discounted packs it's better odds it's free stuff can't go wrong with that right um we have the flashback promo that is going to be 
if there was something below trash i'd put it there i historically have hated flashbacks for at least three to four man straight there was a time when they were actually good when they were actually a fun promo those days are dead those days are so beyond dead it's not even funny um they have ruined flashbacks and i really hope they bring them back to former glory free agency promo forgettable i mean again the cards weren't too great for agency again free agency's hit or miss and it's not necessarily because of ea because of madden think about it if there's a year right where the free agencies are tom brady um melvin gordon maybe king Allen, right is that a fun free agency in madden probably not melvin gordon's not gonna be top tier speed king Allen's gonna be one of the slow receivers and tom brady won't be a meta quarterback now this year we have maybe tyree kill as a free agent and we have Tyree Kill, we have um, Patrick Mahomes, and we have a, let's say, McCole Hardman as free agents, right? That's a banger for agency because we're going to get 99 speed players and a great, great quarterback. Moving on, though, decent promo. I liked it. It, it wasn't hard. The promo itself not bad. I just wasn't a fan of the players, which, again, isn't really Madden's fault. Next, we have Golden Tickets. Golden Tickets, as per usual, usually fun, you know, fan immersive, which is why I would probably put it at least in forgettable and that's to say a lot considering it's golden tickets guys golden tickets this year are horrible for two, two, two simple facts first off golden tickets are supposed to be end game cards they're supposed to be the end game cards like there should be cards that come out later in the game like even a month or two after and golden tickets should still be better aj brown i get 99 speed like there was cards like that didn't they got a lot of wide receivers and halfbacks that didn't get 99 speed that is not acceptable they cannot be powered up so if they have to put like a 96 or 97 96 speed their sprinters not getting them there that was a big mistake they made bad golden tickets this year in my opinion and that needs to be addressed next year again i don't mind the player choice player choice is what i could care you can make kwame brown for all i care as long as he's a 99 x factor kind of guy that can be everything i need for him to be that was not the case this year so moving on we got the heavyweights promo which falls into the equally trash category because the heavyweights is one of the worst things in madden i'll give you guys one thing heavyweights is the best of the trash promos probably only because the first like two weeks of madden they're actually really usable and then after that the trash they're only usable the first two weeks and although they're slow and unathletic they're typically some of the higher rated like defensive tackles and offensive linemen that you can get in the game early on with good block shed good run blocking sometimes you get elaine johnson in there like it's pretty good the first week so it's definitely a bit but it's better than flashbacks because flashbacks is just trash year-round they have to fix that because these, these used to be fun promos in madden now moving on guys we have the nfl honors promo the nfl honors promo is actually pretty great uh it's always for starters good card art good cards usually this year was really good uh like the aaron Rodgers, and it's fun it's it's voted you know nfl voted like we have the um you know mvp defensive player it, it articulates to real life similar to like i said with the draft promo which is why it's one of the more interesting promos it's not just made up cards based on what they believe they want legends legends is good enough it's gonna fall into that category where it's like it's weekly good players um it's not the most fun content but it is new content weekly uh so it's exciting it's weekly content has to always be at least good enough in my opinion unless it's for it's you know these these bottom categories most feared most fear just like any other seasonal promo is going to be a good enough promo now again sometimes in years past guys most feared autumn blasts were a top tier promo but this year most feared the cards didn't enrage and that's kind of a big thing to me because i've been playing since madden 13 and as long as i can remember players enrage Some cool stuff happened on halloween night there used to be like um puzzle pieces players and stuff cool things to do for the halloween promo and this just wasn't there this year i think because of next gen just dropping they were more focused on that they gave us a lot of cards but less like interaction based stuff which i think they need to adjust for next madden next we have the mutt heroes promo now this is going to be great it would have been top tier had they actually done two parts of it because that's how they usually do it we usually go one early in the year one later kind of cut it short but mutt heroes introduced 32 really good cards help with theme teams help the uh, meta teams help with just about everything playoffs promo gonna be good enough i mean playoffs gives you a lot of players um it it, it articulates to real life now i want to be back like it used to be back in the day we used to get like the colin kaepernick's and the russell wilson's and like those cool players we don't really get them like that anymore they kind of just give us like any player from the playoffs that had a pretty good week and they're usually like more theme team oriented but that's why it's just good enough power up expansion good enough but again it could have been top tier had they started it from the beginning of the year and they did it right i'm hoping they next year they do do it that way because giving us a 99 overall christian mccaffrey in july is just not cutting it or late june it's not cutting it right who cares when power of expansion first started they gave us trash players like we we're getting players that no one's gonna use late in the year now they're giving us christian mccaffrey's and players we would have cared for but now it's too late so from day one i want it to be like this right we're one month through the game and saquon barkley or patrick mahomes one of the big name guy hasn't gotten an upgrade yet 
for whatever reason, they're holding Patrick Mahomes until they want to give him the first Halloween card, right? And that's two months. So instead, they give him a power expansion so that his 88 basically goes up to a 90. Just a plus two. Nothing big. But now Patrick Mahomes can be used, even though you only have his base lead, with the other meta cards because he got that plus two. Or you're a King Nylon fan. King Nylon hasn't gotten a card in a month and a half. They're holding him for like an Autumn Blast type of card. He only has an 84 base lead. Give him a power expansion to an 88. Make him usable. Help theme teams. You know, it helps everything. If they do that, power expansion will be one of the best ways to fix discrepancies and inequalities in the MUP market, right? Because that always sucks when there's this really good guy you like, but until he gets a card, you can't use him. So you gotta keep you either gotta keep him there, powered up, and leave him, or you gotta break him down and sell him and wait for the next card. Power expansion could easily fix that. Um, the uh, Rising Star promo. I'm gonna put it in forgettable, guys. I mean, I didn't like it. There was a few good, like AJ Terrells, like those kept guys. They were a few good, um, Savage. A few good budget cards that actually were really good and could be used. But overall, guys, just like Flashback, I'm, I'm gonna call it Flashback Heavyweight 2.0. Like, just it's just like a better version of that because they're young guys, so they have more speed. That's about it. Um, the Rivals was trash. I mean, it was supposed to be like this year long thing. That kind of how they made it sound like it was gonna be expanded upon. It wasn't. It was a quick hitter, trash early on cards, and that was pretty much it. Ricky Premier, I want to put it in good enough. Um, my opinion, here's the thing with Ricky Premier. Correlates to real life for the draft, so it's exciting for a second. You're getting cards for next year, it's exciting. But then when you were, if you played long enough, you know that next year, you almost never actually use one of these cards. Like you, like no joke. Like the only time you use these cards is week well, the first few days of Madden. When you're playing the soul, you're grinding out souls, you're not using all you're not pleasing the auction, you're not buying players, you're just grinding souls with your base team, and you have like 72 overall Saquon Barkley and 71 overall Hayden Hurst, and all these guys just playing on your lineup just in solos until you actually get your team or your base leads to, to fill the spot. Only time it's ever been useful was when Saquon Barkley got that rookie standout, like 88 overall player, like to start the year, and he was like crazy. Or something like that. That that was the only time I've seen a good one. Sugar Rush promo going to be a top tier promo. It was a great promo. Good players. Some eggs, some stuff to it. You know, things that we could actually do with the game, not just so much. I don't like that. I noticed this year they did, right? People were mistaking great content with just blah, like throw up right all over you, right? No, no one understood that. Now I'll explain that real quick. Um, EA tries to sometimes trick us thinking that by giving us a uh, plethora of players that we're going to think it's good content. That's not true. Good content is content that has players, inter usable players, not just players, because that's what they do, right? Like, a few promos and shit, like Auto Blast, they were just like, player, 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 all rookie, player, 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 all these players, like, wow, so many players. When you really look into it, there's only, like, one usable out of, like, the 30 players they gave you. All the other players are just there to say they gave you players. There's no interactive content. There's no house rules that are themed to it. There's no specific activities. Sugar Rush gave us eggs, right? That's cool. Presence with the uh, Zero Chill. That is important. I want them to get back to that next year, because if you just give us players, it's not keeping anyone on the game. Think about it, right? They drop a brand new promo. 30, 60 players, only one's usable. People get that player, they play a game with them. That was fun. They get off the game. There's no house rules, there's no special solo. Like, if there's nothing special, there's no free things to grind for. If it's just a lot of players, it doesn't keep people on the game, and that's what kills the game. Um, we have the Super Bowl promo. Gonna do good enough. Usually, Super Bowl promo is more fun. All we got really was a Tyreek, maybe the Reggie Wayne. I mean, sorry, the, um, the Reggie White and a few others. But overall, it was more of a theme team oriented Super Bowl type player drop. Wasn't my favorite. There's been better ones. Superstar MVP, going to be a top tier promo for me, and simply because the timing of these promos are important, Superstar MVP is one of the first promos that drops in Madden, and they give you cards at a great time, right? Because Superstar MVP cards come with abilities, which is super important because at that time in the game, like late August, early September, training is A, super expensive, cards are, good cards are super expensive, everything's expensive. So if you want to buy a Patrick Mahomes, right, basically at 88, and you want to power him up and chem him up, put abilities, it's going to cost you a few hundred K worth of player, training, and power up. So not just like it's just too much you can kill all your coins just powering up and putting abilities on one player super mvp you pay 250k you get lamar jackson and he comes with two or three abilities or three abilities three abilities first off his quarterback card base like that that superstar mvp card is, has the best stats of any quarterback in the game at the time let's just say and it comes with three abilities stock don't even have to power them up so it saves you the power price it saves you the training price it saves you everything it's just a great card just to put in. I remember back then I was getting like the Miles Garrett. I got all of them because you just stack your team out with those. It's like a million coins for all of them, let's say, versus 500K for one Mahomes powered up, chemed up. And uh, right, right on. You can buy them all and you have your team entirely with abilities and everything you need. It was great in the beginning. Later in the year, it wouldn't serve. It wouldn't be nearly as good because we all want our own abilities. But at the time, it was great. You didn't have to power them up. Uh, these last two guys, here's the thing with some of these, right? This one right here, in my opinion, these are just these are just uh 
theme teams, right? It's theme team oriented, never really helps. You can you can grind up the solos for the free ones, but it is what it is. We have uh, Team Diamonds, again, not exactly the biggest fan. I'm gonna go through these first, because I, 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 honestly, I didn't really like any of these. This was good enough. There were some good players in these, and same with this one. I'm gonna put these all four together. These are like those promos that all kind of go together. They're not really promos, they're built into the game. They have collections, um, some cool exchange sets sometimes, some cool players, some top to like 99 players. You know, I like remember the Barry Sanders we had at one point. There was some cool stuff in some of them, but again, these two are good enough. These two are trash, or forgettable, sorry. Not exactly the biggest fan of those. This one right here. This one has a case to be the top tier. I'm putting it good enough, and there's a specific reason why. The solos themselves, like, like the sequence itself was generic. You got two free players. It was a Baker Mayfield, and I don't remember that other guy. Jack Youngblood. You got two of them. And honestly, here's the only good thing about this whole, this whole thing, right? Which was the team epics. You could exchange the Baker Mayfield and the Jack Youngblood into the Elite Exchange set. Get yourself a nice, like, high 80 base Elite early in the year that you could sell. That was a positive, so people really liked doing that. It was kind of a coin-making method, too. As well as, there was a glitchy, oh, not glitchy, but there was a very OP Jack Youngblood solo with the kick return that you could just do over and over and over and over again to max out mud level. So that made it one of the best things to do in the entire mud game. So, for those reasons alone, it's good enough. Had it been a better solo sequence, it probably would have been, like, top tier. I would even had better rewards, right? Just because we were able to manipulate it doesn't mean it's top tier, right? But it's good enough because you were able to manipulate it. The 50, um, 50 is good enough. It's weekly content, similar to Legends. Um, better players than Legends, but of course, there's one thing that I don't like about the 50. If the 50 had this better, it would have been a top tier promo. Great, maybe. Power-ups. Early in the year, Reggie Bush comes out. I need that Reggie Bush, but you have to power him up to get him to this one threshold, right? Let me get his power-up. 500k, costs more than the card. Ooh, Jimmy Graham, if he had this one uh, extra route running, he'd be amazing. Power up, 500 grand, 500k. It got to a point where it was like stupid. Like every player you wanted, you needed a power up for. A lot of them, they made, they, they did it specifically. They made power up super rare on them, right? Knowing they'd be high in price. Then they made these players so they felt like one less than a threshold all the time. So you needed a power up. It completely killed it. Had that not been a thing, a power up to regular price, like 20, 30, even 50, 60k, we'd pay them. More than the card? It's just ridiculous. And then on top of this, so you're going to buy a power up card that costs more than the card, 500k. Then the card that costs 400k, that's 900k. Plus abilities and training. You're looking at over a million just to get one card up. And then next week, a new the 50 drops, and suddenly that card may not be the best anymore. It was just a waste. I, it could have it, it could have been so wonderfully done if the power if you got the power from the solos. They should have made the solos. Each solo came with the power up. All you do is play the solos. Free. You can buy them on the block for 7k, just like legends. You gotta do it like that. Team of the week. Good enough. If uh, they drop better cards, it'd be a great promo. I like it because it correlates to real life. It's fun to predict. It's fun to watch football on Sundays and then see who's gonna get the card. Like, I'm literally watching football, like, he's gonna get a team of the week that's gonna be a hero like hopefully right um here we got so we went over here this was golden tickets now we got team of the year team of the year in my opinion is always a great problem this year just good enough um i didn't like the player choice for team of the year i feel like a lot of the players that we wanted to get them already got cards prior so they missed out on team of the year upgrades like you know we've gotten like the aaron donalds before we've gotten like the dalvin cooks like team of the year has its chance to have great cards this year wasn't too great um good card again this was just the year of a lot of players it was like they chose quantity over quality this year and at first at first glance i was like oh this is so cool like we're getting all this stuff and then i started to really look back on the year in hindsight and i realized if you look at all these promos it was just quantity like they were just throwing sticks at us like go go take it take it all day we were getting just thrown stuff all day and at first like i said it was exciting and then i realized a lot of these cards aren't even usable they just like pick 30 cards and just here drop them like it's almost like they randomized stats too um this one right here, Ultimate Kickoff, which I believe Ultimate Kickoff was a decent, decent at best. The was good enough. The only reason was that it was earlier in the game, and the players were more affordable this year than they have been in years past, and there were some solos associated with it. Other than that, it probably would have been forgettable. We have Ultimate Legends, again, a weekly promo. It's it's good. It's later in the year, so if it, you know, if it was honestly early in the year, that'd probably be better, but later in the year, we already have high overalls at that point. Some cool guys. You wait, you wait for a specific amount of Legends to come out, and that's pretty much it veterans goes in the trash category with these bottom ones nothing more to stay on those and this one's a top tier when this is zero chill they had presents they had a storybook storyline they had uh, specific house rules they had snowball fights guys they had a lot of this one was quantity and quality which isn't a lot to say like and is it sugar rush was quantity and quality zero chill was quantity and quality superstar mvp was quantity and quality and same thing with fan appreciation which just it was good it was just packs for the people it's worth it nfl draft similar situation and just a little more fun but Zero Trail is probably my favorite promo of the year total. That's about it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Comment down below your worst and best promo of the year, in your opinion. Let me know down below. I'm out.
Peace.